Over 17 months ago, I started with $108,000 in debt. Now I have $65,000 in debt. And my goal is to be debt free by February 2021, but my stretch goal is to be debt free this year by December 2019. I'll show you how every dollar works towards my goal to be debt free and I hope to encourage you to do your own budget and take control of your income so that you can live your best financial life. Last month, I was able to knock down over $2,000 in debt, getting me closer to my debt free goal. Hi, I'm Shayna of The Well Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. And I'm gonna review my March budget with you and walk you step-by-step step with you my plan for my April budget. If you're interested in more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I release more videos like this one. Let's get straight into the review of my March budget. And I will say that March was a really great month, but I can't say that it was a great financial month for me. And we'll see how the numbers really shook out once we get into it. So this is the amount of money that I anticipated making in March 2019. I plan to bring in $7,341.27. And I plan to bring it in through my usual sources of income, through my fellowship, my postdoctoral stipend, teaching, Grubhub, and I had some extra money this month through an Ebates check. If you're interested in signing up for Ebates, because as you can see, they really do send you real money. I'll have a link down in the description box. And I also participated in a focus group back in February, but then I used that gift card that I received at $325 in the month of March. So that's how I planned to bring in money, but it didn't really pan out that way. So when it came to Grubhub, I knew I wasn't gonna be making as much money as I typically make with Grubhub in a month. And that was because I had two trips planned. I had planned to go to Columbus to see my boyfriend one weekend, and then the next weekend I was planning to go home to South Florida because my best friend had an engagement party. So I did those two trips, but I also ended up going back to Columbus, Georgia to see my boyfriend an additional weekend. And as you know, Grubhub, the high pain, you know, days are on the weekends. So that's why I didn't even bring in the $800 that I planned to bring in. I actually only brought in $643.47 for the month of March. And then in terms of Instacart, I actually did have someone use my referral link and they completed a number of deliveries within a month or so after signing up with Instacart and they earned me and themselves a $750 sign up bonus. So I got that money deposited into my account and that was really good for me. So I actually ended up making $7,934.74 in March. So I actually ended up making more money than I anticipated, I believe. Yeah, more money. <laughs> so that actually really, that's really good. So now we're gonna go to the money out and see how the money got distributed throughout the month. So I already plugged in the actual numbers for March, 2019. And as you can see for housing and giving that, you know, went as planned. But then when it came to the transportation category, a few things didn't actually work out. And so with transportation, I actually spent more money on my auto lease in March than I typically do in other months. I typically only spend about $1,600 on my auto lease because I am trying to pay off and own my car by the summer. But because I had earned a little extra money, I decided to bump that up to $2,070 and I did send that money out. However, what didn't really work out especially with that gift card, was that I was planning to use that gift card that I received from that focus group. I plan to use that to cover my gas expenses in March. But what happened was that when I, I buy my gas from Sam's Club because it's cheaper there, and when I went to Sam's Club, they do not actually take gift cards through the pump and they don't actually have an inside store that will allow you to like swipe the card. And so I wasn't actually able to use the gift card at all for my gas purchases. And you'll see how that really works out when I get to the food as well. And so I actually ended up having to, you know, pay for that separately. 
but I also spent more than I typically spend in other months. So although you see that the plan was 140 because every month I do allocate 140, the plan was to allocate 140 from the gift card towards gas, but because I couldn't, that didn't really happen. But I typically know that in a given month, I usually spend about 80 something dollars in gas, but gas prices went up in March. So I actually spend it, spend, is that right? Spend it, <laughs> I actually spent, I actually spent $93 in gas for March 2019. So it's showing that I actually spent less, which is true, I spent less than I actually planned, but I actually spent more than I actually tend to spend over each month. I have a digital envelope set up in Simple Bank for car repairs, and I usually allocate $100 towards that. However, I don't know what I was thinking, but I think because of this whole gift card situation, I actually didn't add up things correctly. And I actually only contributed $50 towards that sinking um, fund, towards that digital envelope. So I didn't contribute as much as I had anticipated, but it's okay because I didn't have any car repairs and I don't anticipate any car repairs coming up. Then when it comes to food, I had actually planned to use that gift card that I got from the focus groups to use for spending on food and groceries. And I did do that. But because the limit on the grocery, on the gift card was $325, I actually spent almost $325 on food for the month. And that's really bad. So I actually spent over, I spent over $125 more than anticipated. And I don't want to do that again. Then when it comes to utilities, everything is the same. The same with the IRA, that's the same. Then when it comes to taxes, for some reason it's saying that I didn't allocate any money towards savings for taxes, but I always do. All the money that I earn from Grubhub, Instacart, teaching, Upwork, any money that I actually get a paycheck, that money gets deposited into my savings account that is really earmarked for taxes. And so all the money that I earn from those sources were deposited in there and that um, equaled up to $2,143. Then when it came to these other sinking funds, like I mentioned, they all my sinking funds got messed up for some reason. I did some bad calculations when it came to transferring the money that goes into my simple bank account that I use for my digital envelopes and sinking funds. If you're interested in checking out Simple because I really love it, I have a few videos on my digital envelopes that you can check out. And I also have a link down in the description box if you're interested in signing up because they actually give you some money for opening up an account with them. But that's where I keep all of my digital envelopes. And so some of these envelopes did get funded as anticipated. And so I did fund my business medical vacation, uh, Christmas vacation, clothing, toiletries, and cleaning stinky funds as I had anticipated. But when it came to holidays and gifts, I usually so I usually send over $91 to that digital envelope, but I only put in $43. Then when it comes to nails, I usually allocate $50 towards that sinking fund, but I only sent over $27. So it's showing that I actually spent over what I intended to spend for the month. And that's really because the sale with my tax saving was zero when it should have had some money in that sale. And it's showing that I spent over $2,101 more than I intended to. But in actuality, I was still actually under budget. And I was under budget by $125 which is really good. So every single month, I tend to spend most of my money on debt and it's because I'm really trying to aggressively get out of debt. And so I spent about 26% of my income on debt. And then my next highest category was housing at about 16% of my income, which I feel, still think is pretty good because they actually recommend that you stay under 25 to 30% of your take home income for housing. So I'm doing pretty good in that area as well. Since I was able to contribute about $2,070 towards my car lease, which I hope to have paid off by this summer, I actually was able to reduce my debt down to $63,000 for this month. So this is really good. I will say that I did poorly. I did really, really poorly when it came to my budgeting this month. And I would actually give myself a D. And that's really because I did some really bad math when it came to transferring the money from my Capital One savings account that my, my check is deposited, my stipend check is deposited into. 
I did a bad uh, calculation of the, no, the amount of money that was supposed to be transferred to my simple bank account, which handles my digital envelopes. And so that messed up a lot of stuff. And because I spent really poorly when it came to that gift card, and moving forward, if I get another gift card, I'm not spending any money from that gift card from my regular budget items. I'm just gonna treat myself with something nice instead just so that I don't overspend. And so because of those things, I just think I did really badly and I give myself a D for this month when it comes to my budgeting. Comment down below and tell me how you think you did on your March 2019 budget and how you plan to improve for next month. Cause I'd like to know how we're all doing in this and I hope that we can all motivate and encourage each other to do better and better every single month. So here we are with my April budget. This is an overview of everything that I plan to talk about when it comes to my April, my plan for my April budget. Go ahead and give a thumbs up for this video if you appreciate that I use my actual real numbers. I know a lot of people don't like to show their real numbers, but I share my real numbers with you because I think it's really important to be very transparent. And to be honest, it's kind of easier on me because they don't have to round numbers and do fakeness with my numbers. So give me a thumbs up if you appreciate that I use my real numbers. So let's see what I really plan to bring in for my April 2019 budget. So here's my money end table. And as usual, I plan to bring in the same amount of money for my fellowship, which I get paid on the last day of the month. So I was paid on March 29th. And so that's the money that's accounted for here. I get paid from my adjunct teaching and I get paid $750 for the month. I get paid bi-weekly. Then when it comes to Grubhub, I'm anticipating to make about $800 for the month. I do plan to go to Columbus, Georgia to see my boyfriend once this month. And then also this month is my birthday month. And so I won't be working, I don't think, for my birthday weekend, but I should be working the other weekends of this month. I also did take off this week, which is the first week of April from my postdoctoral work. And that's because I did get a new job, yay! <laughs> I have a new job and because I actually don't earn vacation time, they only give me 10 days and I have to use them all up or I lose them. I decided to take off this week and so I should be working real a little bit more because of that. And so I plan to bring in about $800. Then for Instacart, I don't think I'll bring in any money. I probably will work, but I don't know I don't know, I plan to do a video on Instacart and so I don't know how it's gonna work out, but I don't know how much money I'm gonna make. <laughs> so as of right now, I'm having that at zero. Then when it comes to Upwork, I might be getting paid because I do have a client that um, I should be making about $1,500 with him. However, it might get to the point where I might decide not to do the project anymore because I feel like we're running into a lot of road bumps and his timeline isn't really working out for mine. So I might have to let that go. So I'm gonna keep it at zero for now, but potentially when I do my review next month, I might have $1,500 there from Upwork. I don't know, we'll see. And then for YouTube, I also did get monetized, so yay! <laughs> I got monetized and I am doing pretty well, I believe, with um, monetization. And so I probably will bring in about $150 at minimum, I think, this month. Probably even more, but I don't really know if I'm gonna get paid, because I actually thought I was gonna get paid last month. So I don't know if I'm gonna get paid, so I'm gonna also keep that at zero. But potentially I could get paid about $150 from YouTube. Then I have an additional here. That is really the money that's coming from my savings account because I need to pay my taxes. So I actually just filmed a video on my 2018 tax debt. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll have it linked up in the cards. But I had money saved basically to cover my taxes and so I'm pulling that from my savings account. So this isn't really additional income, but because I wanted the numbers to work out, I'm pulling this money over into this here so that you can see where everything is going and where it's coming from. Okay, so now let's go over to my money out table. And so a lot of things don't change from month to month. So my rent is the same. I give the same amount in tithes. With the transportation category, there's really only one major change and that's with the amount that I'm going to pay towards my Ollie's. 
So usually I contribute about $1,600 a month towards my auto lease. But in order to pay off my car by the end of my lease term and I have three months left, I need to be making $2,080 towards a payment for my auto lease every single month. And so, so far I have an automatic payment already set up for the $1,600. At the end of the month, I'll see if I have any additional money that I can throw towards that. And my goal is to at least meet $2,080 so that way I can be on track to definitely pay off my car by this summer. Then the rest of the categories are pretty much the same. Then for food, that's gonna stay the same at $200. Utilities. I my, actually, my um, utilities went down a little bit because my Georgia Power went down, I don't know, about $20 or so, or maybe like $18 or so. And I don't really know why I haven't looked at the bill. I just know that I got the bill in through a digital, you know, bill pay um, notification and it said that it was only $58. Usually it's like $71. And usually I'll say Georgia Credit does, Georgia Power does give these like $25 credits randomly. And look, I'll gladly take them, but I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but it did drop my electricity bill a little bit for this month, which is awesome. But everything else is gonna remain the same. Then for taxes, I owe money for my taxes for 2018. But as I mentioned, I have a lot of the money already in my savings account that I typically, you know, deposit money into to cover for my taxes. But my taxes for 2018 are going to cost me $11,889. Actually, I think that's wrong because I just did the video on this, which I'll have linked up in the cards. Um, I think it's um, $11,636 actually that I need to pay towards taxes. That's my federal and state income taxes. Then when it comes to my sinking funds, I did change up a few categories again. I feel like every single month I'm changing up the categories, but um, like I said, I got a new job. And so I figured that I want to um, increase how much I'm saving towards some of these sinking fund categories. So I did make some changes. And by the way, I will be doing a video on the new job. I have a start date, but the paperwork isn't final yet. And so I don't wanna do a video yet until all the paperwork is final. And then I'll come on and do a video of how much money I'll be earning and how much money I anticipate taking home and when I anticipate getting a paycheck. I think I'll still get paid on a monthly basis. And if I don't get paid on a monthly basis, the money that I talked about getting in for this month also might change, but you'll see that in the monthly review. Anyway, back to the sinking funds. Because I got a new job, I decided that I wanted to up how much money I was contributing to city new funds for each month. And so some of the things are the same. So the business, um, I'm still contributing $150 towards that and that's to run this YouTube channel. Then for medical, I think I did up that up to $50. And so I think before I had upped it to $20 up from $6 back in like January and February. So now it's at $50 and I think that's a pretty good spot. And that will allow me to get glasses, like a new pair of glasses and other things that I wanna take care of. Holidays, that is up maybe like $9. I decided to round it out at $100. And that would help me, especially because last month I didn't contribute as much money as I had anticipated towards holidays and gifts. So this will help me out a little bit. So I'm contributing $100 moving forward. Vacation, we did book our travel for our vacation in August. So we are going to, where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? We're going to Mexico, but I can't remember where in Mexico. Oh, Cancun, by like the Cancun Tulum area. So that's where we'll be going. And so I have to pay back my boyfriend for covering me for it. And so my portion of the trip is gonna be, um, I believe like $900. It's already been saving up for that. And so this $100 will just go towards paying him for you know my portion of the trip. Then for Christmas vacation, that is gonna be $118 as it always is. Then for nails, it is the summertime, or it's not the summertime yet, it's the springtime. And the summertime is also coming. And so typically you know that I usually only get my fingernails done, but because warmer weather is approaching, I need to also get my feet done. And I haven't got my feet done in like, since the fall, like since September. So I'm overdue. And so I'm planning on $75. However, I'm not sure if that's actually how much I need because I haven't gotten my feet done in so long. I usually get a gel pedicure, 
pedicure on my feet so that it surely lasts like a month or a month and a half. But I kind of feel like it might be a little bit more than $75. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Then for clothing and toiletries and cleaning, all those also remain the same. So the only things that I really changed were the nails category, the holidays and gifts category, and my medical category in terms of increasing the amount of money that I'm contributing for sinking funds. And so now I'm contributing about $693 for sinking funds in total, whereas before I was contributing about $591. So my total expenses for the month come out to $17,444. Based off of the plan that I have for the month, I'm actually coming under budget at $790 remaining that I'll have in my savings account. And so if that is the case, really that money will then go towards my savings for my 2019 taxes. And because 2019 quarterly taxes are due on April 15th, I might decide to just go ahead and pay that towards my quarterly taxes because as I mentioned in my tax debt video, I want to start paying on a quarterly basis so that I can get ahead of my taxes. So if at the end of the month, I might decide to put that towards taxes or I might decide to put that towards my car because I also mentioned that I want to make sure that I'm paying off my car by the time my lease is up this summer. So I don't know what I'm doing with that money yet, but so far I am under budget by $790, which is pretty good. Then when it comes to debt, I debated whether or not I should put my taxes into this debt meter and I ultimately decided not to because I do have all the money that I need to be able to pay off my taxes. So I'm not technically going into debt with the federal government or with the state government. So I decided to exclude that from this debt meter. But after this month, after paying $1,650, the minimum that I typically pay towards my car, I will be down to $61,493 in debt. But if I pay off the full amount that I would like to pay off of $2,080 towards my car, then I will be down to $61,063 in debt. So I'll still be in the $61,000 range of debt and potentially even less if I do contribute more towards my car payment. So we're getting close to, you know, reaching that $60,000 know, threshold, which I'm really excited about. So that is my plan for April 2019. I hope to make a lot of improvements compared to March where I gave myself a I hope that this month will be an A plus month for me. And so I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification.